Hey ya! Um, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make just um, a plain ring but with some texture on it. So instead of just exactly this plain wax ring that I've carved up here, I'm going to be making a mold of this but I'm going to be texturing it in the sand and I'll show you how to do that. So we'll be using our horizontal flask for this one. Um, and as always, we start with the male side first, making sure that lip is face down and we're packing it from behind so that we're protecting that lip from the hammer. We don't want to be hitting the lip with the hammer because we'll destroy it. But if we're hitting the outside of the flask, it doesn't really matter. So make sure we get rid of all this excess clay on the back. We want to make sure it's flush. So just using the ruler, we cut it off. See how we've got all these gaps in here? It's not a problem if you do end up having that because we can just fill that in with the clay. We just repair it. There we go, we've got our surface. Okay, so let's talcum powder this surface so that the two clay halves don't stick together. And it also means that your object comes out of the clay a lot easier too. So I have this wax that I've carved. I'm going to use that. Press it into about halfway. Right, put the female on top, line up those registration marks, add in some crumbly clay, press it down with your finger to make sure it's all tightly packed around that ring, and then we can add some more chunks. Right, and compress it with a hammer. And again, we want to cut off any excess clay that we have. All right, so to open this up, we don't want to screw it open. We want to open it nice and evenly. So just like that. And we'll get our object out. Cool. If you do raise up any of that clay, just pat it down gently. All right, so we need to create a way for the silver to get inside of this flask. Um, I'm going to do it on the female side. It doesn't really matter which side you do it on. Just have to be a bit mindful that you're going to have to clean up that section. So if you've got, um, if you've got a design that has some pattern on it, you probably wouldn't put your sprue hole on the same side as your pattern. You do it on the opposite side. But with a plain ring like this, it doesn't really matter where I put the sprue hole. I'm going to use this straw, because the straw acts as like an apple corer. And it's a lot gentler. Alright, and you just push it all the way through. So it's gone all the way through, and it's right inside of that design. I am going to put the ring back in and tidy that up a little bit just because I know that I've disturbed that clay a, a little. I mean, I am about to texture it up, but still, it's a good habit to get into. All right, flip it over. We want to carve a funnel now. Using your knifey tool, carve out a funnel. Make sure it's nice and deep. Deep is important because we don't want that silver bottlenecking for any longer than it has to. Because as it's bottlenecking, it's cooling down rapidly and it potentially won't fill your design. Alright, we're going to make sure this hole and the funnel are nice and clean. We don't want any loose debris. No loose bits of clay that will follow our silver in. 
causes all sorts of problems, so we want to avoid it. I like to use the back of my paintbrush as like a, a rolling pin, and I just smush down all of those loose bits of clay. And I use my sharp tool to run around the inside of that hole and burnish the clay. All right, with that done, let's get texturing. So I'm going to go in my, with my sharp poker and I'm going to scratch up that surface a bit. So the surface I'm scratching up is this part here. I'm going to do a little bit on the sides but not much. So it's mostly all this here, which translates to this vertical wall. So I've got to be quite careful to get it in there and scratch up that surface without knocking this finger section here. So we want to leave that and not mess it up at all. So this part will take a little bit. I like to go in with a crosshatch sort of approach and just really lightly scruff up that surface. Okay, so I've scruffed up that surface. I've even added in a little bit of extra clay just to give it some real grungy texture. All right, before I cast this, I have to add an air vent. I have to allow room for the air to escape from this negative space to allow the silver to fill it. So as the air is escaping out of this air vent that we're about to create, the, um, the silver is rushing in to fill that vacuum that the air is leaving. So we use it to our advantage. I really want to encourage the metal to shoot down here, come around both those sides and crash and meet in the middle and fuse together. So I really want my air vent to be right here to encourage the metal to fill this flask completely. So it's the hardest reach section is usually where I put an air vent. So I've just done a little channel and then I poke a hole all the way out and it's a good idea to open that hole up a bit more just to make sure it's absolutely there because you can accidentally close it up all right let's close it up and cast make sure you're wearing safety glasses when you do this and have a ventilation mask on hand because it can get quite smoky. So I've got my Mini Smith torch. Red is for LPG gas, green is for oxygen. I turn the gas on a little bit, ignite it with the lighter, make it a little bit bigger. All right, bring some oxygen in, some gas, some oxygen, and we want quite a big flame. Use a size seven tick. This is an old casting I did, melting it down, reusing it. This flask is seasoned with borax, so I don't need to add any more borax to it. If the metal looks pretty dirty and there's lots of gunk floating on the surface of your metal, then you'd add some more borax to clean it up. But I don't need to do that. Metal is nice and molten, rolling around like liquid, looking like mercury or a mirror finish. It's good to go. So I bring my crucible over to my flask. I'm resting the crucible against the flask. I'm tipping the crucible so it, the metal is just about to pour in, but not quite. I'm holding that flame at the lip of the crucible because I'm heating it up and keeping the metal hot. I'm going to hold it here for about five seconds and then when I'm feeling confident and ready, I'm going to dump the metal down the hole. So you really need to do this quickly. You can't do it too slow. Making sure the flame stays on the metal the whole time as you're pouring it down the hole. That's quite important too. So one, two, three, down, done. Alright, oxygen off then gas. All right, and this is the good time to put your mask on. Straight after you've cast, it's not hot.
because the clay is a fantastic insulator and it's holding all of that heat inside. If I was to let this sit for three minutes, the heat would disperse through the clay and then through the aluminium flask and then I wouldn't be able to pick it up. But right now, when I'm super excited to see what's inside, I can open it up. How great is that? Let's have a look. So I like to pick it up and flip it over and put it back down on top of itself. That way that button is hidden away and you're not going to accidentally touch it. Cool, let's get this out of the clay. So the best way to get this casting out is to pull it out where the sprue is, which is right there. If I was to pull it from the opposite side, this sprue and button are acting like an anchor and I could accidentally bend my casting trying to pull it out this way. So it's always best to grab it from the thickest, heaviest part, which is where the sprue is, and pull it out that way, levering it against that flask. Alright, let's get our waste bin. We can catch all that burnt clay because we can't use it. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. It's an interesting texture. And it would look pretty amazing if we blacken that and rub it back because the liver of sulfur, which is what we use to blacken it, will stay in all of those deep cracks and then we polish back the high points. So you'll have this very strong contrast between light and dark and it'll look really textured. Fantastic. I'll clean that up and show you what it looks like. So I just spent maybe half an hour cleaning up this ring. So not that you can see it very well on this, but I'll make sure to take some photos and put them on the end of this video so you can see in better detail the texture that I was able to get on this. And I've blackened it with liver of sulfur and then I've rubbed it back. So I've got polished high points and I've got blackened textured low points. And that's how you do that. Well, I guess um, stay tuned for more. Let me know if you want to see anything in particular. Um, thank you for watching. <laughs> All right. Bye.